Hi there, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you how you can use infrared thermography on a 3D building model, just like what, what I got here. This is a great way to show um, the details that come out when you use uh, infrared thermography on, on, on buildings, uh, because you can kind of look around it and so on and so forth. You can interactively explore the entire building and the images much better than if you just look at 2D images. All right, so I'll show you how that is done in just a minute. Don't forget to check out my book, Architectural Design with SketchUp. It covers all of these topics and makes for a great desk reference. You can find it where books are sold. There's also a link to it on my site, sketchupfordesign.com, together with lots of additional tutorials and news. Okay, let's get started. So first of all, as a background, what is thermography? Uh, it's, it's basically a way to take pictures, pictures and quotation marks, of, of buildings, for example, or other items, where every pixel in that image represents a temperature. Now, then you can map that to some kind of a you know, rainbow color scheme or, or just a gradient scheme or something like this. And, and highlight which parts of that image are um, hotter in temperature and which ones are colder. So now you see very much my rainbow color scheme right here. So there's a, there's a hot spot right there. And then of course up here it gets colder. Now there's other reasons for that too. <laughs> Emissivity is a, it's a whole topic for itself. But in any case, um, that is a great technique that you can use to inspect buildings and uh, find leaks, uh, you know, all kinds of reasons why you might want to delve into that topic. Now, uh, obviously you need a, a thermography camera for this. And what I used for uh, this model here is actually a, a very easy one, not too expensive, but again, I'm not promoting anything. There's, there's a bunch of them out there. This is just a real nice one. So I used this FLIR one, which attaches to your phone. And at that point, you can use your phone as a thermography camera. Now, that doesn't give you the highest resolution, but it gives you a resolution that is, you know, good enough for many cases. And you can actually stitch a bunch of images together, as is the case with what I did here, and get yourself, you know, your entire building covered. Because what we're going to do actually is we're going to take pictures of our building in parts, just sides and you know you see i <laughs> didn't do the greatest job here but in any case you can uh you can take smaller portions of a building and then fill things in and now i'm going to show you in a second how you fill in these um ends that that don't have a texture applied to it all right so let's assume you get yourself uh one of those cameras and then <clears throat> you go out and take photos or well, <laughs> thermography images, it's not photos. Um, and, and then you usually get something like this here. So here's a collection of just three of mine, uh, and they look like this here. You can, of course, you know, in the settings for the camera, maybe get rid of the logo, maybe get rid of the, 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 the color bar. But it, in any case, you know, even with that in there, uh, this is actually fairly usable. And the fact that it doesn't have too high a resolution is also not too bad because again, you know, we may want to just use this to illustrate uh, uh, an overall phenomenon, or we may want to use this just to kind of compare things or something like this, you know. But then again, you can spend the money, <laughs> get a higher resolution thermography camera, and and you know, and you're good. Okay, so one quick thing about taking the images or taking the uh, um, thermography images here. You see here on the right in that image there is a um, temperature range and if you want to stitch multiple images together into what I did there uh, into a building model you do need to set that as a fixed range. So you basically have to um, set the minimum and the maximum to something. Usually these cameras allow you to easily do that, but uh, you may have to do it manually. At that point you get round numbers, of course, or you know, however you want to set this, completely up to you. And there's a good reason <laughs> to set it one way or another. 
but um, just just remember that from one image to the other you have to have a consistent color um, uh, you know range as well as as gradient and then the gradient itself the color scheme is also usually settable in those cameras where you can pick you know the rainbow that I have here or anything else it's usually like a ton of those in the software to pick okay and then you know same as any photography you kind of want to get you know nice straightish <laughs> shots of of facades uh, that's not always possible in this case here I always had to kind of look up of course and so so I, I do get some distortion but we're going to get rid of that distortion in just a second when we paste those images okay so you got yourself a camera you got yourself the um, images that you needed <laughs> you went out uh, in the depth of winter to get uh, find out you know <laughs> how much heat your building is losing something like that and next you're going to go into SketchUp and here we do need uh, at least a rough model of our building so what I have here is of course the over design building at, at, at UMass Amherst and it's, it's a you know blocked out building with reasonably correct um, dimensions and that's actually good enough for us here because again we want to we don't want to have a fully detailed building model here we actually want to have a um, model where we want to illustrate something okay now let's get this facade right here covered with a thermography image okay I'm going to import these they are available as uh, image formats so I'm just going to import those as textures uh, you may have used this technique with other textures in SketchUp before where you can uh, you know import any image and then straighten it you know uh, apply it to faces and etc etc um, so that's what we're going to do here too and I'm going to pick this one make sure I bring it in as a texture and then I'm going to click on import and when I do that you see here I can now paint this to any surface that I have and I'm just going to roughly paint it right here it's actually not going to be um, perfectly aligned right there now you have to be within a group or you have to at least you know have access to the actual face itself to paint this properly if your building is grouped or a component you just basically paint on top of that you couldn't actually do that but um, but it wouldn't work very well either so you need to apply this image right here to this face okay having said that <laughs> it's crooked <laughs> let's fix it all right so this is where we're going to right click on that face and we're going to look for texture and position this is of course a technique that you may have used in SketchUp before where you can you know move textures rotate textures and so on and you can actually straighten things quite nicely too so as you see here now when I click on texture position I do get my image repeated like this <clears throat> and I get these four pins one two three and four and so this is now a nice technique that you can use to actually place and stretch this onto that facade um, uh, very very quickly uh, all right so what you got to do you single click one of these pins and by single clicking it attaches itself to your mouse cursor and you can now place it somewhere here right there so you don't want to click and drag if you click and drag this will skew and do all kinds of funky stuff so you basically click and then click again to place and then up here click click again to place and then we're going to do the fourth one right there now this is where i'm oops where i'm heading towards like the edge of my image and you know it's not <laughs> it's not a perfect image but but we're going to use it for now okay so now we need to click and drag these into positions and the way that I always do it is bottom left right top left right because then it just works so this time click and drag until you attach yourself to the corner now I'm going to do the right one click and drag to that corner 
I'm going to go top left, click and drag right there. Now you can actually see I didn't place this properly, so I'm going to do a little fixing there. Okay, click and drag. And then top right, click and drag, and guess what? This thing is placed. Now I can just right click, click on done, and we got ourselves a reasonably straightened <laughs> image on top of this facade. Now this is of course a technique that you can use for even photographic images. Um, and that works really well and that's been around for a while ever since you know Google owned SketchUp and used this for uh, content in, um, in Google Maps or Google Earth actually. But, um, but it's, a, it's a great technique. Works very well for this too. So I'm going to do another facade just really quickly just so that you see it again again you know i have to have access to the the the, the face right here i'm gonna go file import i'm gonna find myself the correct one right there again texture import and as long as i get it on there we're good <clears throat> i'm gonna right click on this texture position and then again, click, place, don't drag, just click and place, click and place, and there's number four, click and place, and now you click and drag until those are in position, and I always do the bottom left, right, top left, top right, and we're done. Ta-da! There you go. Not too bad, huh? So. As you can see here, this this is starting to look look really good. Uh, you know, I could have done a better job with <laughs> getting the brand name out of there. But um, now you get yourself a model, a 3D model that um, has these thermography images applied and that you can look at in SketchUp or you can actually um, show it to clients, for example, in a way where you don't have to share a SketchUp file. So next, what you could do, for example, is you can upload it to the 3D warehouse. And I have mine right here. I'll put the link in the description and you can, you can try it out yourself. But, but basically, um, upload it to the 3D warehouse and share the, the, the link. You can view this thing now in 3D. Uh, SketchUp Viewer comes up right in here. And after a few seconds, you can, you or your clients can, you know, explore this building find out where you're losing heat or whatever you know you want to explain here and um, and use this so it's a really nice technique to um, you know combine building science and 3d modeling um, using infrared thermography so I hope this was useful. I uh, hope you can use this for your projects. Let me know if you got any questions in the comments and um, uh, have fun <laughs> with this technique.